Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, and I am delighted to welcome and thank all of you for joining Capital Health Network's webinar entitled Secure Messaging, Adopting Digital Referrals in the ACT. I am Ross Trinidad, and I am the Digital Health Manager here in CHN, and I'll be facilita facilitating tonight's webinar. But before we start, I wish to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that we are meeting on, the Nanawo people, and I wish to acknowledge and respect their continuing culture and the contribution they make to the life of this city and this region. I would also like to acknowledge and welcome all the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who may be attending tonight's event. Um, just for some housekeeping, all participants have been muted, so please address any questions to all panelists in the chat box, and we will answer them after, um, during the Q&A session. And um, for everyone's information, this presentation will be recorded and will be available in CHN's YouTube channel. Um, so this event, um, why are we conducting this event? Um, just a backgrounder. CHN is closely working with the GPLU of Canberra Health Services and Calvary Hospital and ACT Health because um, if you are not yet aware, um, by November 2022, um, the preferred method of referral will be using health, sorry, using health link smart forms. So that's why we provided this event to help you and give you more information about secure messaging smart forms and SR specialists and referrals. Um, so I won't keep that long. Um, tonight you'll be learning about HealthLink smart forms, the changes that will happen with the referral to outpatient services. You'll hear from SR specialists and referrals for referrals to private specialists. And then you'll also hear from the agent, Australian Digital Health Agency about my health record and secure messaging. All right, so let's start. First of all, I would like to thank our guest speakers for their contribution in tonight's event. And I would like to introduce to you our first presenters from SR Specialists and Referrals. So we have Dr. Carmel Servin is the General Manager of Servin Media, the company providing SR Specialists and Referrals service. Servin Media is a family business that has worked closely with specialists and GPs for over 30 years. Carmel has led the development of SR both in New Zealand and Australia, and SR is now the main way New Zealand GPs send referrals to private specialists. Joining Carmel is James Alcorn, who has worked in the healthcare sector for over 15 years. In the last 10 years, James has specialized in technology in the healthcare sector, including implementing cardiology information systems, my health record, and population health analysis tools. James' prior role was with Northern Sydney Primary Health Network on two projects to help increase digital maturity by adopting new technology with medical specialists and the aged care sector. James has continued this work on secure messaging, working with SR specialists and referrals to help GP practices and specialists better use this technology. Thank, Thank you. you, Russ, for that uh, introduction. Uh, tonight, we were going to talk about the aspect of doing secure messaging and uh, electronic referrals to the private specialists. Um, so we uh, the name of our, our product is called SR, Specialist and Referral, and you'll notice the, the red logo there. Uh, the, what I was just going to cover tonight is a little bit about the existing referral process, a quick background of SR, Specialist and Referrals, why use SR uh, referrals, and the broader implications of using uh, secure messaging. Uh, then we're going to do a demonstration, and SR works in Best Practice, Medical Director, and Genie. Uh, the other day I was talking to a practice and they were talking a little bit about the existing referral process that they have at their, their practice. And the feedback from the practice manager was that a GP typically opens up the clinical system such as best practice or medical director. And then they'll use um, a piece of software in there called the letter writer. Um, and then they'll create their referral and it's a template and, and so on. And then they'll print that referral out 
then it gets given to one of the administrative staff who fax it over to the private specialist. And then the administrative staff will um, typically scan that, that document into the clinical system. So there's a lot of work involved in that existing referral process. And some of the challenges that um, the GP practices find is that using faxes, that often the faxes don't go through, um, a page might be upside down or and so on, so it could get mixed up. The other aspect is in terms of the privacy and security that faxes are just not secure. So that um, at the other end, they can be, that they're faxed through to, that they can be um, read by other people other than the intended, intended recipient. The other challenge that the practices often feed back to us is that um, quite often they have a number of directories that they use and those directories can get out of date. They might get one from the hospital um, and there's uh, a directory they might have in their, their clinical system. And from time to time, those specialists move. So that's a, a real challenge. So the other thing that we find from the other side of that is the specialist they're quite often saying that um, they have trouble locating the patient referral and so they'll ask the practice or the patient to get the, the referral refaxed and that can be a tremendous frustration to the GP who spent a lot of time doing the referral and also the patient and having to follow things up so there's a lot of inefficiency in in terms of that the existing process. Uh, a little bit of background, um, how we came about. Uh, many of you might be familiar with this paper directory. We've been producing this paper directory for around about um, 20 years in Australia. And uh, Server Media is a company based in New Zealand and they've been doing the directory over there since 1991. One of the big advantages of using this uh, directory is that all the entries are validated. So we, we have a team that will check um, all of those entries and make sure they're up to date. And it's distributed to all the, the uh, GPs um, around the country, but particularly in the, the ACT. Um, what happened was that there was sort of a big change for um, us. And one of the challenges has always been that the, the specialists move around. So We've had the paper directory and that gets updated each year and a new copy sent out. But one of the challenges was that it was not up to date. Um, so by 12 months, it can be quite out of date in terms of um, a specialist, the number of specialists have moved. So what we did was we created a new program called SR Specialists and Referrals. And that is the electronic version of the paper directory. So we've taken that. The big advantage with going electronic for us was that now we can keep that directory up to date and we update it almost on a daily basis. Um, SR referral is now available in Genie, Medical Director and Best Practice. So that covers the majority of the clinical systems that are out there. As a little bit of background, um, the other aspect, I guess, is that um, SR referral is not only the directory of all those specialists, but it also has a template that allows the GP to quickly create the, um, the referral. The referral is created using that template and then it's sent using uh, health link secure messaging. The big advantage of that is that um, the message is sent securely, so it's encrypted at the GP practice. And then uh, by the time it arrives at the specialist where it gets unencrypted, so it's always safe there. And only the intended recipient can answer, uh, open that, um, that referral. In terms of the template, um, it's based on what they call the health link smart forms. And we're gonna hear a little bit more about how the health link smart forms being used in the public hospital system as well. Uh, most GPs are probably fami familiar with the uh, smart form because it's also used for my aged care, the fitness to drive medical. Um, so you've now got four of them. So my aged care, fitness to drive, Canberra Health Services and SR specialists and referrals. So um, it's a similar workflow regardless. So for, I guess the, the reason to use that SR referral is that it just improves the amount of the information that are going to cross to the specialist. So there's a much better clinical handover. Uh, for GPs and specialists, less printing, faxing and scanning. Uh, for the other thing that's very important for GP practices and 
particularly for practice managers to be aware of, is that there isn't a requirement for GP accreditation that you are using secure messaging and that you that the patient information is uh, secure. The other one is that for the eHealth PIP that you are using um, secure messaging as well. The other thing that is, makes it very efficient for specialists is that when the referral gets sent through, that the uh, referral will automatically create that patient in the uh, specialist clinical system. So it improves the accuracy and reduces the amount of typing of new information for the, the specialist practice. One of the things that we also, we've been talking to a lot of practices and one of the things that's sort of come up is that there's a lot, I guess, a bit more to um, secure messaging and why to sort of start thinking about it. I guess we've seen in New South Wales that it's been affected by um, a number of natural uh, disasters and so on. But also when we talk to some practices, we've talked to some specialist practices that have said that they've had a pipe burst and that their practices become uh, flooded. So there are other additional benefits to um, think about when using secure messaging. So those are that there's this huge amount of staff time that's being spent doing administration. Scanning documents are often uh, difficult to read and a large documents when they get uh, scanned into the system. So that potentially can slow that, um, that down. The other thing is that um, the electronic workflow makes it much easier for GP and administrative staff to work from home. Um, that's probably a very important consideration with COVID um, that many staff are sort of isolating and so on. So this makes it a lot easier to access that information, have that business continuity. The other thing is that a lot of GP practices have already implemented telehealth and electronic prescriptions. So a lot of GPs have really um, been able to take on that new technology and see those benefits from being able to work from home. So where you find SR and indeed the other HealthLink smart forms is in best practice if you are using the latest uh, version, there's a blue icon there that says HL. And you just click on that and that will open up the list of smart forms. If you're using the older version of um, best practice and also the new one, it will still work. You click on view and then health link forms and that brings up the list. Um, further users who are using medical director, if you have your patient open, you click on the health link tab and then new form and that will bring up the list. And for users who are using Genie, um, it's simply just click on tools and then health link online. The other one is that for specialist practices, you can access the um, referrals that have come in simply by clicking open and then incoming letters. And what I'll do now is just hand over to my colleague, Carmel, and she'll show us a demonstration of um, SR referral. Thank you, James. Hi, everyone. I'll just share my screen. Right, can you see best practice there? Hopefully you can. Yep, that's coming yep. through. Great. Um, so I'm in best practice and I have a patient record open and we're just going to run through now how easy it is to do an SR referral. I, and um, any questions, we're very keen to address those at the end. So we can come back and, and cover off in more detail at the end, providing this time. And if there isn't, um, we'd be keen to follow up as well with you separately. So if, if, the, if we don't get a chance to cover off all the questions coming through. So just mention that. So. As James said, we open the SR service from the patient record clicking on HealthLink icon. I'll just open that. And that opens HealthLink's landing page. And then the SR service is this one up the top. So you've got your other forms down here and then SR is right here. So just click on that. And that opens our main search page. I'm just going to pop it up. So here, you, if you know the specialist that you want to refer to, you can go in and search for them by name. So for example, I could go in and search for, it's best to start with the surname and the names start to come up. And so I'm bringing up, I'll go for this one. And then I can go in and it shows me the detail that we have on the specialist, including any multiple locations. And if this is the specialist you want to do a refer referral to, all you need to do is click on e-referral and choose the location that that specialist is at. So that's how easy it is to go into there. I'm not going to click yet. I'll just do a couple more finds to show you the search some more. So if you don't know the name of the specialist you want to refer to, you can go in by category. And we have grouped the category. So you can see they're quite an extensive list. And if I'm looking for orthopedic, I might just go down to the orthopedic section. 
And then I can also put in the area that I'm in. So I could put in Deacon. And up comes Deacon. And then up will come the list. So here we've got orthopedic surgeons and Deacon. I can choose any other suburb, obviously. And I can narrow down. This is a very broad search still. I could go down to just shoulder surgeons if that's what I'm interested in. And then that's going to abbreviate that list to the subset. So you can see the range of specialists. Now notice most of these so far are e-refer. Um, we do have specialists that are still manual referrals. So this directory is comprehensive. It's covering specialists that are set up on HealthLink and also specialists that are not yet. So even in a specialist that is electronic, um, sometimes you'll see locations that flag like this, which is manual. What this means is you can still do the referral process, you can still create the referral form, but it's actually going to tell you that you need to print that off and fax it. So this is a one-stop shop for doing referrals to all private specialists, and it's very clear as you go through whether you're doing an electronic or a manual referral. So now let's do a referral. <laughs> so we'll go in and we've actually set up a specialist who's a test one that you can practice with. So you just do a find for earlobe as our test specialist today. And up comes earlobe and we'll choose, we'll choose this address. And here's the referral form. So this is the smart form um, template that James was talking about before. And you notice it's, it's a HealthLink smart form. So it follows the same workflow as other HealthLink smart forms. So it's something you'll become quite familiar with. Um, so it has the specialist details up the top. You can change the time frame of the report, referral. You can flag it as urgent if you'd like to. And you must fill in this field here, which is your reason for referral. So this is compulsory. And then you just work down through these tabs. So you can do an attachment here. And if on a real um, patient, obviously there'll be more uh, reports and things that you can select here. Um, you can also browse in your computer and choose files and other images and things if you want to include those as well. So I'm just uh, uploading that one just as an example. Now you can see here it's saying that it's including it, but it doesn't actually show the attachment file itself in full in the version that you see here, but it does go through to the specialist. So just flagging that to you. Um, medications and warnings. Um, the, there'll be a set that come on automatically, and if any are not appropriate for the referral, you just untick them to remove them. There'll be the medical social history from the re, um, patient record, any other specific patient information, obviously, and also your own information as the referrer. So you can check through that. You can see a preview of the referral by clicking preview. And this shows you how the referral will be formatted. If you're waiting for some information like um, test results, you can park that referral and it will be saved in, in your um, forms list and you can come back and open it later. Uh, but if you're happy with that referral as it is now, you can go submit. And now that's going to create the referral PDF and it's telling you that it's been sent as well. So referral sent and acknowledged. If there was any problem with that, you'd get a message at this point and tell you that it hasn't gone through. So this is telling you that referral has actually gone through. And I can close out of there and I can actually see the referrals I've sent and correspondence out. And note here, there's one that says print facts. So this is a referral that I've done earlier, or past one actually, and it says up here, this referrals be printed and sent by fax or email. So those are the ones that are manual. They're flagged very clearly at the top. And that obviously that's a different piece of information from the electronic one. So it's obvious which process in your system as well. So that's a quick bit on that. Now, um, I'm aware there's some specialists uh, joining us today as well. And so I'd like to also show you just very quickly um, on Genie software, I'll just click to it. Um, what happens at the specialist end and, and why SR is so useful um, as a tool for both GPs and specialists. So at the specialist end, I've actually opened up the, I'm now in Genie software, I've jumped across and I've opened up the incoming letters folder. So I'll just, I'll just go back one step. So open incoming letters. And another important step here is to choose all doctors so that you see referrals coming in for all. And at the moment I've got unlinked. So this refers to new referrals that have come in. And you can see here, they're saying they're a letter from specialist referral. And here we have a set that have come through. And I'm just gonna open on one of those. So this is a referral to our, another one of our practice specialists called Mickey Mouse. And it's for the patient, David Anderson. 
And you can notice up here, there's these red icons. That means that um, when the referrals come in from HealthLink, so this has been delivered by HealthLink into the Genie software, it hasn't found a match for the patient record. So what we can do now is we go new, and that's going to automatically load the patient that this referral is for into the Genie software for them, so they for the practice. So they don't have to type all the information in off the fact. So obviously that's very helpful. And then the next step is just to go link. And that then links that referral to the patient record and all that information is there. So when a patient phones in, the staff can find that patient in the system and see the referral and all the information there. And then if the referral was for, I'll just, oh, you can see one there had an attachment. Um, I'll just click back. So just on this one, this was a referral done earlier and you can see here's the X-ray coming through and here is the blood tests. And if we just click through to another one here, so here's another patient, Penny Anderson, and she was already at this practice. And you can see here, there's a match on the information. So it's a very quick <laughs> demo, obviously. I've tried to cover a few things there. Um, for specialists that are not on Genie software or on other software which is compatible with receiving HealthLink smart form, so there is a, a number of, uh, quite a range of software that is compatible. But if you're on um, software that's not compatible, there's also the HealthLink portal service available. And now this is um, for any, any um, specialists that are not on compatible software and, oops, sorry, it's not open there. Um, and what it means is that they can, um, just flip back to here, I've got it open here. Uh, they can log into that portal and receive the referral. So at this point, it's not going directly into their software, but it's still giving them access to referrals coming through electronically. So now I've opened up the portal service. That's a browser-based service. There's no cost for specialists to be set up and to receive referrals from HealthLink. And there's no cost for GPs to send referrals. I just sort of mentioned that as well. And we're continuing to set up specialists all the time. Um, I'll hand back to you now, James. I'm <laughs> gonna quick run through and obviously we're keen to answer questions later. Um, time permitting. Thank you. Thank you, Carmel. Uh, so Carmel took us through some of the um, uh, the systems that we have. So obviously there's um, uh, three systems that we, we primarily work with. So there's a medical director, uh, best practice and genie. And we've put together these quick start guides that are available for all those systems. The other thing is that um, if you want to do a trial and train on uh, how to use it, we've set up a, um, a dummy specialist in the system called ELO. So you can do a test referral and learn how to use this for your private referrals. Uh, the other thing is that we can support the practice and train the GPs, the practice staff, and also specialist practices on how to use SR referral and make the change over to electronic referring. Uh, the important thing is just to remember that this directory is always up to date. So, and it's easily available through your clinical system. So it's just some uh, three clicks of your, your mouse buttons away. Um, We've got our, um, our number here and um, also our email address. We've sent a copy of these slides. Um, they'll go out to the practices as well, as long as those guides as well. Uh, so thank you for your time. And if you do have any questions, I think we've got a Q&A session as well at the end. So thank you, Russ. Thank you. Thanks, James and Carmel. Actually, um, yes, we do have a lot of questions, I think, um, coming through, through our port. Um, channel. Um, I think we've got time to um, accommodate those questions now um, before we proceed with Dr. Anne-Marie. So first was um, from Renata. Uh, she said that I used HealthLink for a referral to QE2 and was asked to do a referral through their website. A lot of typing to do and is it secure? Um, and who updates the list of specialists in the Canberra Health Services? Some of the specialists are not in the hospital anymore. Is this um, for SR referrals, or maybe we'll we'll leave it for Dr. Anne Marie to reply to this mm -hmm. later on? Yeah. Um, next one is from Rupert. When trying to attach reports to be sent with the HealthLink smart form, I find radiology reports from IMED cannot be attached. Can someone explain what is the case and how do I get about it? 
I might pick that one up, that's okay. Um, so what we'd like to do there is follow through with HealthLink on that. So that's to do with um, uh, the settings in HealthLink. So we would like to investigate that one further. Um, it may just be an issue at your site. So we'd like to check that and, and find that out. <laughs> and, and then we can, um, if there is a broader issue there, obviously we'd like to get that addressed. So as, um, as the system is used more, there will be particular reports that may need some more work to get the integration flowing fully. But HealthLink has been around for many years, so we're, um, I know that a lot of um, attachments do work, but there are some restrictions and we'll work closely with HealthLink to get those resolved if there is any issue there that's um, ongoing. So thank you for alerting us to that. And if you find any other limitations, do let us know and we will definitely follow that through with HealthLink. We um, do lodge support queries and assist with getting those resolved. So happy to assist on that one. Thank you. Um, another question we have is, does SR work with MedTech? Uh, yes, I think it does. Um, we do work with MedTech closely in New Zealand. Uh, and I am just con uh, working with MedTech at the moment around a guide in that regard as well. So um, do come back to me on that and I hope to have some information for you shortly on that. So yeah, we're very excited to, to be launching with MedTech as well. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple of questions as well from um, Rupert and another uh, blow. blow. Um, I think I'll have to reserve this for Dr. Anne-Marie because this is re in relation to Canberra Hospital and she's, yeah. she'll be able to answer these questions. Um, last one, I think we are a specialist using Gen2. So as Carmel mentioned, I think if um, it's not compatible with your current software, you can use the HealthLink provider portal um, and access the referrals. Yeah. Yes, and so. for practices that are using Gen2, they can receive their referrals um, into Gen2. And then if they, if the pra specialist practice wants to make referrals, we've got that portal available. And I think we're sharing our um, contact details. So if they would like some training on that, we're more than happy to do that. Thank you. Um, I think last question is, can we refer to allied health and private psychologists via SR? Not yet, <laughs> uh, but we are looking at broadening it out. Um, so we are, uh, there's a bit more work to do on the database side to set that up, but we do have some requests for additional services and we will be looking ahead to, to bring those into the service as well. So that's coming. I think that's all we have. So thank you, Carmel and James. Um, I think I'll now proceed with uh, Dr. Anne-Marie Svoboda's presentation. Thank you, Russ. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Russ. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Okay. Um, I'll just try and share my screen. Ah, there it is. I think I'm just doing it, share. And bear with me whilst I just get it. <laughs> to Thanks, Anne-Marie. Well, you do that. How's I that think, going? Yep. Yeah, it is. It is. Yep. We can see it. Um, before you start, I just yep. want to give a little bit of your profile to our yep, sure. audience. Yep. I'm happy to introduce myself, Russ. So All right. My, yeah, <laughs> <that's okay. laughs> so my name's Anne-Marie Swoboda. I'm the medical director of the GP liaison unit at Canberra Health Services. And I'm also a GP in private practice, which is where I am this evening at Fisher Family Practice. Um, so I'm just going to speak very briefly to you tonight about um, smart forms from a Canberra Health Services or um, ACT Health perspective. It's been a very long day, I'm sure, for everybody, so I'm going to keep it very short. Um, so... Uh, <clears throat> Um, smart form is the um, electronic referral um, that is currently available to Canberra Health Services and that's via HealthLink as we've just seen demonstrated with that fantastic demonstration from Carmel and James. It's exactly the same through that HealthLink tab in, in your compatible software. So the software that's compatible with um, smart forms are Genie, Medical Director, Best, pa Best Practice and MedTech. Um, and the reason, um, so uh, smart forms were introduced um, as a referral um, 
uh, type to Canberra Health Services in 2019. And we've had sort of a fairly slow uptake, but we have been seeing a steady uptake in the use of smart forms. The reason it's so important um, at the moment is that um, across ACT Health in the public system, we are moving to a new digital health um, platform that's going to be across the two hospitals, both Calvary and Canberra Hospitals, as well as UCH as well, as well as our community health providers as well. So that's um, mental health, um, community allied health, um, QE2. I saw there was a question about QE2. So all of those things will have access to um, uh, the new digital health record. Um, that's set to go live um, in November this year. And the really exciting thing is that from um, CHS or um, ACT Health point of view is that the HealthLink smart forms will actually integrate with uh, ACT digital health record. So when a GP or a specialist sends a smart form referral, that it's going to integrate much better into our system. It reduces that issue about referrals getting lost or missing. And we have a much better system of tracking and reporting on those referrals and communicating back to um, the referrer about what happened with their referral. So our aim is really to have almost all um, GP referrals come into CHS and Calvary via smart form. Calvary doesn't currently have a smart form, but by um, the end of this year, we hope that their um, services will um, have set up a, a separate um, smart form that's available through that health link tab. So at the moment we have 124 GP practices in the ACT using smart forms and we've been we've received over 38,000 referrals. Um, so what are the benefits of using HealthLink smart forms? Well, it's, it's really exactly the same as we've, as we've just heard from James and Carmel. So I'm not going to repeat everything that they've said, but essentially um, it allows the um, GP or specialist to write an electronically, ele electronic referral that is directly from their GP software. If you've got compatible software. So it pulls in your demographic data, your medication information, social history, all the aspects that you want in that referral to make it as accurate and as complete as possible. It allows you to um, type in what the referral information is. You can even copy and paste from your um, uh, practice management software directly into um, the smart form. And then we know that it's a really secure way to send that smart form um, a referral into the system. Once you send that smart form, just as you saw with the demonstration that was done by James and Carmel, you get an instant um, acknowledgement confirming that it has been received and it's got a date and time stamp. So a lot of secure um, uh, security for the GP and good, good for the patient as well to know that that referral has been received. So from um, Go Live, both CHS and Canberra are going to be able to um, send back referral status as well to um, the referrer. Um, so that will be via HealthLink and that's going to confirm the acceptance of the referral. It'll also um, give information on um, triaging of that referral and also if there's missing information or if the referral doesn't meet the referral criteria for some reason and has to be rejected, but also a book, um, appointment bookings, etc. So as we saw in the demonstration with the um, SR smart form, it's exactly the same. It's quick, it's easy to use. Um, it does require a move away from old habits. And I know, um, you know, for all of us, that can be really difficult to do, um, but it is worth it. So what can you do right now in your practices if you're not already using um, smart forms? Um, best thing would be to get the training manual specific for your practice software. Um, you can have a play on your dummy patient at our practice. We've got several dummy patients set up so that we can actually send a smart form practice and have a go and make sure that we're um, putting that information um, all in correctly. Talk to other GPs and specialists, share your knowledge and experience, the issues that you're having um, and, and speak to the uh, providers as well so that you know if there is a problem that you're experiencing such as attachments, um, that we can you know, work with you to troubleshoot those issues. You can contact GP Liaison for further information. I've got our phone numbers there and also the CHN practice support um, teams to, to help you um, with the setup of these these things. And I've also popped there the HealthLink contact number as well. 
So of course, nothing is perfect and there are glitches. We do have to be patient because from time to time, something happens. Sometimes it's a technical issue at our end. Sometimes it's a technical issue at the other end. I do know from my own personal experience, we've got medical director as our practice software and it still frustra frustrates me enormously that I actually have to put in the medication dose in. Um, it doesn't automatically transcribe for some reason into medical director, but that's a minor thing and I've gotten used to it. And now I know how to do it. I fix it up every time. Um, of course, it takes time to get used to something new. Um, please take care when you're attaching um, uh, attaching documents really only use the recommended options and that's all in the manual what what is um, what you can um, put into the smart form attachments sometimes I think the um, GPs get confused about the attachments that come onto the system um, onto the smart form system because when you look at um, when you look at it back in your own software you won't necessarily see that the attachments uh, on the referral, but um, feel assured that they actually are there when they're received at um, our central health intake. And I have checked that repeatedly. So I know that it does happen. So please keep at it. It does get easier with time. And, and you know, the important thing is that it's better for our patient care. And that's the most important thing. This is just a little bit of our um, data that we've been collecting on the usage of smart forms. So as I said, we had um, smart forms from um, November 2019 at Canberra Health Services, initially only about 6% of referrals um, coming in via smart form. But by May this year, we've, we've gotten up to 44% of our referrals coming in through our central intake are through um, smart forms. And that was the end of my presentation. I'm happy to try and answer some of your questions. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, I think I'll have to go back to the questions that were posted earlier because, yes. yeah. so the first one is um, if smart, smart forms is a secure way, which I think you've addressed, but then um, the question is who updates the list of specialists in TCH because some of them are not in the hospital. Yeah, anymore. like bugbear, isn't it? Yeah, frustrating. Um, of course, you know, there's a lot of movement um, of um, specialists in and out of the system, just as there is of GPs as well. I mean, um, we do ask for it to be updated regularly. It is an issue, but it is a task that's been um, given to our um, central health intake administrative team. So hopefully it does happen. It just doesn't happen as quickly as we'd like it to. And it, I guess if you notice that there's an error, please contact the GP liaison team and we'll make sure that that um, information is passed on to the appropriate people. Um, this is more of a comment, Anne-Marie. Um, when sending referral to Canberra Hospital for certain specialties, you can send a referral to not a named specialist. But if you do that, you will receive a fax from Canberra Hospital that they actually want a named referral. And yeah. often the name of the doctor would not be a choice on the smart form. So eventually the GP would have to write a paper referral for that named specialist and fax it. So it seems that that, that de defeats the whole purpose it's of the It's a frustrating security. thing. So I do understand that, you know, requests for named referrals when you've made the decision to send an NTANS referral is very frustrating. Of course, the GP has no obligation if that referral has been sent to provide a named referral. Um, so if they don't want to, they don't have to. Um, there is an option on the smart form drop down um, box uh, for um, what we call head of service. So if you don't know the specific name of the specialist, but you still want to do a named referral, you can choose the head of service because now um, all referrals can be actually pulled. Um, so it doesn't matter who the specialist name is at the top of the um, referral. If you've written, you know, cardiologist Peter Scott because he's head of service, but actually it's going to go to somebody else. Those referrals are all transferable. Hopefully that answers the question, but certainly GPs are under no obligation to then send a fax referral if they've already provided an electronic referral. Thank you. Um, another comment. Um, I have used quite extensively the Canberra Hospital smart forms. I get the impression that um, they could not see the attached pathology or radiology reports because I keep on getting phone calls for the referral to be faxed. 
Yeah. So if the GP has attached them correctly and they're sure that they've attached them, um, they should be there. And certainly my, the GP liaison team can double check for that. I know the problem will be that somebody hasn't scrolled down at our end. <laughs> so it's an education issue at our end. So please provide feedback directly to GP liaison and we'll chase it up for you. Thank you. Um, so there are a couple as well about non-compatible software. So again, it's you can use SmartForm still by contacting HealthLink and registering for their HealthLink provider portal. Um, another question, Anne-Marie, who maintains HealthLink list of GPs? So um, HealthLink would maintain their list of GPs, wouldn't they? I don't know. That's a question for HealthLink, isn't it? I might yeah. We maintain, we maintain a database of GPs at Canberra Health Services. So we actually do that for ACT Health, but for HealthLink. Uh, practices usually have a login um, that they can log in. The practice manager typically can um, keep that list up to date. The practice can also just telephone HealthLink and they can add or remove a GP who's left the practice. So that's just a matter of making uh, a call. If you look up their website, you can see those details there. And you might also ask at the same time to get the login so you can maintain it yourself as well. Thanks, James. Thanks. Um... Is it, does it interface with NSW? Um, NSW. I think James would be able to answer that as well. Yeah, um, um, there is a, a project in New South Wales um, that they're looking at trying to um, centralize referrals and, and so on. There's currently the HealthLink smart forms are being trialed in uh, Central and Eastern Sydney, so around the Sydney CBD. There's a project of that local health district and also Royal North Shore. I don't think they're doing anything with Queen Bean at the moment, but I think those are trial sites to sort of roll it out more broadly. And obviously, I think they're looking at Canberra as well to see what happens in, in Canberra as well. Thanks, James. I think you've also answered because um, this is a question, like if can practices across the border in NSW refer to CHS with this method. But yeah, I think um, it's not done yet, even in Queen Bean Hospital. Um, we had a comment with the named specialist, which Anne-Marie has already answered as well. Um, if we as GPs refuse to send a named referral, will our referrals be penalized? So as I'm sure GPs know um, that the hospital cannot block a referral or disadvantage a patient uh, where there is a NTANS referral. So no is the question and answer. They can't be disadvantaged. Yeah. Um, can we go back to previous page on smart forms? I was having to close and start again. What was the question? Sorry. Um, I think if there is an option to go back to the previous tab, um, because the um, he he said that he's having to close and start the smart form again. Well, I've always been able to go back. Yeah, I think there are like tabs on the left hand side, and you'll just have to click those tabs to be able to go back to the, that section. Um, it's not really like the other um, websites or pages where there is an arrow for back or or forward. This one, you'll just have to click through the left hand um, nav navigation or like sections. Um, when using the HealthLink smart forms, will we have to type in patient details? I think I can answer that. Um, if you are using a compatible software, everything is pre-populated, um, all the patient details and um, actually even some summaries um, of the patient. But if you are using a provider portal, then yes, you'd have to type in the patient details um, in the provider portal. We sometimes get letters for GPs who have left our practice. Yes, um, Chris, uh, as per my understanding with my conversations with HealthLink, um, it's also the practices responsibility to update their directory 
um, so, so that if a GP left in your practice, so the practice manager should have a logged in or an admin access to HealthLink where they can um, update the details of the GPs that are working in their practice. Oh, okay, from Anita, can a practice in Queen Bien refer to Canberra Hospital with the HealthLink smart form? I believe the answer is yes, but I might have to double check. I'm pretty sure it's yes. <laughs> yes, because we so. get from Jerobombra, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, just yep. an additional note on that. If if you want to use a form and it's not showing up in your list on the HealthLink landing page, you can contact HealthLink and request that they turn on that form. So sometimes there's, um, you know, that it might have been missed on a set for a practice. So if you can't see the referral form that you want to use displaying, you can request to have it turned on by HealthLink. So that might be helpful too. Thanks, Carmel. Um, oh, actually, Sharon, thank you, Sharon, for replying to that. Um, Sharon has just confirmed. Sharon is a, a member of the GPLU Canberra Health Services, and she has just confirmed that NSW can also, or Queen Bien can send referrals to Canberra Hospital via smart form. Um, all right, I'll have to um, accommodate last two questions so that we can move forward with um, Kathy. Um, why did I have to ring the orthopedic register after sending the e-referral? It is very time consuming. Does this, is this, so this is, well? um, look, that's just the process and procedure that there is. So if somebody has a, um, I, I presume this person is talking about fracture clinic. So if somebody has had a fracture, the procedure is that you have to ring, you have to speak to the registrar, um, and then write the name of the registrar on your referral. Um, that's just the way that the process goes. And yes, I agree it is time consuming, but there's a huge volume of referrals that do come to Canberra Health Services. So we do have to have a way of quality assuring that the correct um, advice is given to somebody um, for a referral. And that's just for the Fracture Clinic. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Um, okay, last question we have. Um, can I share this webinar with my practice manager? Surely, um, this, this webinar is recorded and after, after this event, we will be sending you an email with all the presentation slides, with all the relevant resources and um, with a link to the recording um, to our YouTube channel. All right, so thanks everyone. Keep those comments and questions um, coming through. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Thanks, James and Carmel as well for answering the questions. Um, I would now have to move to our next presenter. Um, so our next presenter is Dr. Kathy Rainbird. She holds a PhD in behavioral science in relation to medicine and is a manager of education and adoption at the Australian Digital Health Agency. Kathy is based in Western Australia and has been working with Aboriginal medical services and other healthcare providers, both across WA and nationally, training them in the benefits, features, and clinical use of My Health Record and other digital health tools. Let's all please welcome Kathy. Thanks so much, Russ. Can you see my slides all right? Yes. Yep. Excellent, great. Um, so I think that the previous presentations have covered a lot of the, the sort of core content um, that you probably don't need to hear over again. But um, just to give you a bit of an update from the sort of national perspective from the Digital Health Agency, I just thought I'd give you a brief update around secure messaging and also oh, briefly around my health record. Um, I'll skip over the acknowledgement because Russ already covered that beautifully at the beginning, but I'd also just acknowledge elders both past and present and the country that I'm speaking from this evening. Um, and highlight that the Digital Health Agency has been working with PHNs like Capital Health Network um, across the country and with hospitals and across the whole um, clinical peaks and various parts of the healthcare sector to implement these digital health tools. And they're all about making sure that that key information that you need as clinicians is available 
and shared in a secure way. Um, and I guess that's the highlight of this evening is, is making sure that information is shared securely. Um, secure messaging is about sending information from one directly from one provider to another, whereas some of these other tools are enabling that sharing of information, not just from point to point, as we say, um, but too many. So for instance, putting that information in my health record then means that if the provider at the other end doesn't have a complete picture of that person's um, health status, they, if they've got access to my health record, they can hopefully find it in there. Just also touching on those other digital health tools that of course have, we've seen an uh, explosion in as a result of uh, the pandemic in particular, around telehealth and the utilisation of that, and of course, electronic prescriptions, which has uh, been rolled out in a fast tracked way to ensure that um, people who are isolating can get the scripts that they need filled. I won't go into any more detail around those two things, but just give you a bit of an update around my health record and secure messaging from the agency perspective. Um, so I won't go through what my health record is. I'm assuming that most of you already are well across what it is, um, but just to briefly say that it's really about having that information available wherever the person goes across the healthcare system and making sure that you can see that key information if it wasn't sent to you directly. So if a referral perhaps is missing key information, one option could be to have a look at the person's My Health record and you may well find there's test results or other information in there that you haven't directly received. So it complements your existing clinical records. It doesn't replace them. It doesn't replace your point-to-point -point communication or your secure messaging referrals, but it just gives you that extra information that you might not otherwise have received. I won't go through all the other points on this slide. Um, if you do want more detail about that, we run sessions all the time to go into the detail around the other aspects of my health record and do live demonstrations in different software products as well. So I um, encourage you to think about joining into those if you're interested. But just to give you some updated statistics, these are actually based from May 2022. I think I was just looking at our website today. We've actually just had some updated stats um, be published on there. So if you want the even more recent ones, they're on there. Um, but to point out that pretty well everyone in Australia, 23 million people have a My Health record. They're already there in existence and there is information now really available and significant clinical content in them. So you can see that we've got uh, over 96% of um, records with information held in those records. I think when it started out, often the record would be quite empty until people interacted with their healthcare system. But of course, with COVID-19, people getting their vaccinations, there's lots of information now in there, including information around immunizations and PCR test results coming through. As I mentioned, the agency has been working closely with PHNs and a focus initially with PHNs was to get GPs and pharmacies and public hospitals connected. Um, but we're also now working with specialists and there's been a recent industry offer by the agency to get those software products that a lot of specialists use across the line to enable connection to my health record. So now we're really focusing on getting that registration of specialists happening um, with the help of the PHNs, of course. And so that's why there's a discrepancy in the proportions there. So don't worry about that too much. But the, the good news is, is that it is being used at the other end. And you can see here the viewing statistics for documents that have been uploaded by other organisations. And again, in public hospitals such as Canberra Hospital, their clinicians are using the system and more and more of them are accessing and finding it of use. So making sure that you've got your patients up to date information added and uploaded in there will mean that if they do end up in hospital, at least the clinicians there will be able to access that. Um, and that's just per month. So there was over 1.7 million views um, in public hospitals just in May. This is just to highlight the amount of clinical contact uh, content that is available through my health record. And it does include um, the information coming from hospital. So the discharge summary. So if you're seeing patients coming back, um, you can find that information as well as pathology and radiology reports. Um, again, I won't go into all of that, but just to highlight that that's happening. So I guess the, the 
biggest push that's happened recently with my health record is to develop some of these um, overviews that we can see in the middle of this screen. So all of the documents that are listed on the sides are available if they've been uploaded into the system. And these overviews bring together the information and make it quick and easy for you to find it when you need it. Um, particularly relevant at the moment is that immunisation consolidated view, which includes the information from AIR. So you don't have to separately log into PRODA and access the AIR portal. You can immediately see it through your patient's records, through my health record, and you'll see it in there. Um, that other one to highlight that I really find useful and perhaps hospital clinicians would find useful is the Medicare overview. Um, specialists really like that because it gives them an insight into who else is involved in that patient's care. So patients perhaps um, might not remember the details of a specialist that they saw six months ago. They'll say, I saw a cardiologist, but I can't remember their name. Um, if you look in that Medicare overview, it actually has a list of the claims um, and it includes the provider's name. So that can be really helpful just to get that bigger picture. In terms of the labs and um, diagnostic imaging services that are connected, um, best to check the website to see which ones are connected. We have been, again, really pushing for those pathology labs in particular to connect, to be able to ensure those PCR results um, and COVID-19 results are immediately available in my health record. Um, some labs I am aware in the ACT do need an e-request. Um, so you might want to contact uh, Russ and the team and check if you've seen them on the website and check which um, ones require that e-requesting. And again, that's a secure way of making sure that information's transferred so that there's not those transcription errors and so on. Um, and if they get it as an e-request, then that their results will also be uploaded. So very quickly, some of the key benefits of having um, and using my health record is quick and easy access to key health information that has not been directly received. Um, and if you are a specialist, having your letter in there means that anyone else that that patient then sees in the future will have a good understanding of the complex or conditions that you've diagnosed. Uh, less administrative burden, gathering patient information, having that to hand as it's needed, saving times and costs associated with sending letters to other healthcare providers. So if it was someone who wasn't the direct referrer or um, someone that you've sent a letter back to, if they're asking for it again, you can just point them to my health record. And of course, what it's ultimately about is improving clinical decision making by making sure you have access to that specific information when you need it. I won't go into too much detail on all of this at the moment in terms of how it works, but if you have um, a conformant clinical software, then it's accessible through there. It's accessible through the hospital and the hospitals and the software is able to upload. If you don't have either of those options, there is a portal as well as per the uh, HealthLink example, but this one's for my health record. Uh, if you are working in the hospital, find out how to access and view it through the hospital applications. I'm hoping that the new system that's being implemented at Canberra Hospital is going to include the access to my health record, I'm sure it would, um, and check which uh, documents your hospital's uploading as well. Um, most hospitals, as I mentioned, are already uploading discharge summaries. Some are progressing with uploading other documents such as goals of patient care or specialist outpatient clinic letters. So again, that's something to confirm with your specific hospital if you're working in the hospital. In private practice, um, you can upload using your clinical software, or as I said, you can access through the provider portal, but that is view only. If you are in private practice, you do need to meet a few steps and go through a few things before you can connect. Um, one thing you do need to make sure is that you have a policy in place that covers the access and appropriate use of the system, that you train your staff, and you do have to go through a process of getting registered. But Russ and the team at Capital Health can help with that um, and can guide you through all of that. We also have templates for the policies and so on available. Uh, we also have a connections team at the Digital Health Agency who are available to provide support. So if you need help um, in any other way, you can reach out to them through that email address or the 1300 number that you can see here. So that's just a very 
brief nutshell update on um, my health record. In terms of secure messaging, I guess the key point that uh, I think the others have already really made and why it's so important is that the old methods of using snail mail or fax, or I dread to say, say that some might be using email, uh, are not secure in terms of sending information. So secure messaging is the solution that can enable that safe, seamless and secure exchange of that information from point to point or from direct from one health provider to another. Um, so it is really important to think about implementing it. Um, it will mean that your patient's data is transmitted in a, in a much safer way. Um, and as uh, Anne-Marie mentioned in her presentation, that you get that acknowledgement that that information has been received at the other end. Um, there have been some pretty horrific examples where um, there have been instances where information has not been sent to the right fax number, for instance, and that has actually led to critical clinical incidents. Um, so, you know, it's really important to make sure that that information is getting through to the right person and, and using these secure messaging options will enable that. One of the things that um, the agency is working towards and we're hoping to roll out um, towards the end of this year is something that will also, uh, I think, address some of the questions that have been raised by the audience throughout this session around keeping the addresses up to date. Um, so instead of having, if you have a particular in, at your practice, um, instead of having to log on to all the different sites and updating your details across all of those different directories, we are working towards a solution called Provider Connect, where it will mean that you can log on to one spot, update those details in one location, and that will send out to all of those different um, other business partners, if you like, or providers. So if HealthLink and SR Referral are on that list, they'll get that published and sent through to them directly. So you can only, you'll only have to update that information once, and that will just get published out to the relevant um, connectors that you need it to go to. Um, so watch this space for that. In terms of secure messaging flow, the main point to make around this is that there is a uh, you as a provider writing your message. It's then sent through a secure messaging supplier. So whether that's HealthLink or another. Um, and when it does that, it's encrypted. And that's the important part because of course, that's what gives the security and the privacy of the information. Previously, other information that's not encrypted, of course, can get intercepted or hacked, or if it's faxed, it can land in the wrong hands or is uh, sent to the wrong number. So it's sent to a secure messaging su supplier that has that information encrypted. They send it through to the secure messaging supplier of the other healthcare provider and it's then sent to them and, and able to be opened within their systems. I think the others have already highlighted a whole lot of these benefits, but I think the, uh, the really big one is, of course, saving time in terms of that administrative process of sending these messages, being able to do it directly through your computer and just looking up a clinician and sending it directly as a, a secure e-referral um, is going to mean so much less administrative burden for your practices. Um, so it makes a lot of sense in that regard as well. But of course, the really big win is that confidence in the privacy and security of that data being transmitted. Um, so I won't read through all of those others, but I think that's a, a really important one to highlight. Just quickly, I'll just point out a couple of useful resources that we have. In particular, the agency does have a, a web page which is linked on this slide, so you can go directly to it. In here, you'll find fact sheets, frequently asked questions, and an implementation guide. So if you need support or want to have a look at that broader information, um, I'd encourage you to go to that website and check that out. As I mentioned in relation to my health record, we are doing demonstrations in a range of different softwares. Um, so you can learn exactly how to use it and what you can find. Um, there's also sessions around improving data quality in your practice. Um, 
we have sessions about implementing policies as well for those of you if you're a practice manager and you're keen to get that sorted um, and there's a range of others that you're welcome to join in we're running them regularly again these are all hyperlinked and will take you to the relevant registration page and there's a number of different times and dates that these are being held so please join and um, you can also bring all your questions uh, finally, just pointing out that we have a range of cybersecurity resources as well to support your practice, some simple security tips for your um, practice, as well as uh, the security issues around using different methods of communication um, and advice around how to deal with um, privacy and security within your own practice. Uh, so that's it for me. I'll just put up the last slide, which is our contact details for further support. If you do have any um, detailed questions later on that you think of, this email is a general helpline. Um, it, they then get logged, the emails there, and, and get triaged out to the relevant part of the Digital Health Agency. So if you have any other general questions, I encourage you to use that. And that is it from me. Thanks, Russ. Thank you, Kathy. Um, yeah, so we'll be opening for questions. I think we've got one here. Um, can you clarify parental rights in accessing a child's record? Can a parent see that a 13-year-old has been prescribed a contraceptive pill, or can they see that a pregnancy test item number was recorded? So parents do have access to a their child's My Health record up until the age of 14. So the answer would be that if they, yes, if they logged on to their child's My Health record for a 13 year old, yes, they could potentially see that information. So it's good to be conscious of what is being uploaded. And there are also ways that you can stop that information from going up. So you could uh, advise, um, you could change settings in your background to make sure that that information isn't uploaded. Thanks, Kathy. Another question that we have is, do we have to get the patient's consent before uploading any health summary? So the general answer is the use of my health record is actually covered specifically by legislation that gives you the authority if you're using it for healthcare um, to both view and to upload without having to ask the patient's permission every time. That being said, if the patient asks you not to upload something, you need to make sure that you comply with that request. Um, and if you are about to upload a shared health summary, one part of that first time of uploading that shared health summary is having the agreement in place with that patient that you are that person's main primary or nominated healthcare provider. So you're the one providing that continuity of care for that person. So they would have one practice or one GP who would upload what's called the shared health summary, which provides that sort of snapshot overview. And that agreement, it can just be verbal. It doesn't have to be written down in any way. Um, that just needs to be made in terms of saying, are you happy for me to do the uploading of this shared health summary? Um, and after that, then it doesn't have to be asked ever again. Um, I think that's about it. Um, are there any more questions um, that anyone would like to post in our Q&A panel? Yep, I think, I think that's about it. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Uh, so again, I would like to thank everyone, um, our speakers, um, everyone who attended tonight's event. Thank you for being very engaging and um, for posting all your questions so that everyone would know and would have more information. Um, before we end, um, we will be sending out a survey regarding this event. Please feel free to um, reply, give your feedback so that we can improve on our education sessions in the future. And lastly, again, we will send the presentation slides to everyone. Thank you for all those thumbs up. <laughs> um, we will send the presentation slides and the resources to everyone. And um, CHN Digital Health Team, Taylor and I are here to support you. Um, please call us or email us. Um, we will be providing our contact details in the e post-event email that we'll be sending. So thanks again, everyone, and have a lovely night.
Thanks, Russ. Good night. Thank you. Thanks Good all. night. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.